before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define and introduce statistics, recall the concept of measures of central tendency, define quartiles, deciles, and percentiles, illustrate the measures of position. Let's get started. What is your score in the National Career Assessment Examination when you were in grade 9? Do you know your rank? Have you thought of comparing your academic performance with your classmate? Have you wondered what score you need for each subject area to qualify for honors? Whenever your teacher asks your class to form a line according to your height, what is your position in relation to your classmates? Have you ever seen or heard different numbers used to give information about something? If yes, then you're looking or listening to the results of the statistics. A statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to come up with a useful and meaningful information. During your grade 7 and 8, measures of central tendency was discussed to you. This includes the mean, the median, and the mood. Consider the data set 2, 6, 6, 10, and 16. The basic purpose of the measures of central tendency is to gain more knowledge and deeper understanding about the characteristics of a data set. The mean represent the average of the data set. This can be solved by adding all the data and divide it by the total number of data. In our example, we have 5 total number of data. Adding the data set, we have 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 10 plus 16. Over the total number of data, which is 5. 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 10 plus 16 is equal to 40. 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8. Thus, the mean is equal to 8. How about the median? The median is the middle number of the data set. To find the median, simply list all the numbers in increasing or decreasing order and choose the middle one. In our example, the data set are arranged in increasing order. And the middle number is 6. Thus, the median is 6. The mode is the value that occurs most often. In our example, 6 appears twice, and the rest of the data appears once. Thus, the mode is equal to 6. Another method to analyze a data set is by arranging all the observations in either ascending or descending order of their magnitude. Then this ordered set is divided into two equal parts by applying the concept of median. However, to have more knowledge about the data set, we may divide it into more parts of equal sizes. These are called the partition values. Dividing the set into 4, 10, and 100 parts of equal sizes. The corresponding partition values are called the quartiles, deciles, and the percentiles. These are the most common measures of position. Again, the measures of position is a technique that divides a set of data into equal groups. Suppose that there are 10 students in a row forming a line according to their height from left to right. On the left side being the smallest and on the right side being the tallest. Let us say Kenneth is the third tallest student. What does it mean? As you can see, there are 7 students 
shorter than Kenneth. It means that 70% of the students are shorter than Kenneth. Also, we have two students taller than Kenneth. It means that 20% of the students are taller than Kenneth. How about if Vincent is the seventh tallest student? What does it mean? As you can see, there are three students shorter than Vincent. Therefore, there are 30% of the students are shorter than Vincent. Also, there are six students taller than Vincent. It means that 60% of the students are taller than Vincent. At this moment, let us try to illustrate the measures of position starting with quartiles. Again, quartiles are the three score points which divide a distribution into four equal parts. Suppose that this is the data set and you divide it into four equal parts. One, two, three, and four. The first score point is what we call the lower quartile. Or in symbol, we have Q sub 1. The second score point is nothing but the median. Or in symbol, we have Q sub 2. The third score point is the upper quartile. Or in symbol, we have Q sub 3. As you can see, 25% of the distribution is below the first quartile. 50% of the distribution is below the second quartile. 75% of the distribution is below the third quartile. The whole distribution is 100%. More so, the difference between the quartile 3 and quartile 1 is what we call the interquartile range. After quartiles, we have the deciles. Again, deciles are the 9 score points which divide a distribution into 10 equal parts. Suppose that this is the data set and you divide it into 10 equal parts. The deciles are denoted as T sub 1 d sub 2, t sub 3, d sub 4, d sub 5, t sub 6, d sub 7, d sub 8, and d sub 9. As you can see, 10% of the distribution is below d sub 1, 20% is below d sub 2, 30% is below d sub 3, 40% is below d sub 4, 50% is below D sub 5, 60% is below D sub 6, 70% is below D sub 7, 80% is below D sub 8, 90% is below D sub 9, and the whole distribution is 100%. After deciles, we have the percentiles. Again, Percentiles are the 99 score points which divide a distribution into 100 equal parts. So that each part represents the data set. It is used to characterize the values according to the percentage below them. For example, the first percentile is 1% of the distribution. P sub 2 is 2% 2 of the distribution. P sub 3 is below 3% of the distribution until P sub 99 which is 99% of the distribution. Based on the information that we gained about quartiles, deciles, and percentiles, we can infer the following information about equality. Number 1. Q sub 1 is equal to the 25th percentile. 
since Q sub 1 is equal to 25% and P sub 25 is equal to 25%. Number 2. Q sub 2 is equal to D sub 5 is equal to P sub 50 since they are all equal to 50%. Q sub 3 is equal to P sub 75. Since Q sub 3 is equal to 75% and also P sub 75 is equal to 75%. More so, each decile has a corresponding percentile. D sub 1 is equal to P sub 10 which is equal to the 10% of the distribution. D sub 2 is equal to P sub 20, which is the 20% of the distribution. D sub 3 is equal to P sub 30, which means the 30% of the distribution. D sub 4 is equal to P sub 40, which is the 40%. D sub 5 is equal to P sub 50, which is the 50%. D sub 6 is equal to P sub 60, which is the 60%. D sub 7 is equal to P sub 70, which is the 70%. D sub 8 is equal to P sub 80, which is the 80%. D sub 9 is equal to P sub 90, which is the 90%. For our next lesson, we will solve and interpret quartiles, deciles, and percentiles for ungrouped data.